Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Steelers walked into the Cam Sutton suspension situation completely blind, there has been no decision. The Pittsburgh Steelers shocked a lot of fans when they brought back Cam Sutton during the 2024 offseason. The organization chose not to re-sign him going into the 2023 season, and he wound up struggling at outside corner for the Detroit Lions. He got himself into legal trouble while with Detroit, which led to his release. Pittsburgh had a hole at slot corner, and they decided it was a good idea to bring Sutton back in on a contract worth the veteran minimum for the 2024 season. The NFL is still investigating Sutton's off-the-field issues, and it's likely he finds himself being suspended for multiple games to begin the 2024 season. The length of the suspension is unclear, but if it is a substantial one, Pittsburgh would probably need to add another corner to the roster. Insider Mark Cabley recently reported that it is likely Pittsburgh has some idea of what Sutton's suspension will be, since Art Rooney too has been around a while and presumably has connections throughout the league office. Bob Labriola completely contradicted that point, and said there is no way for the Steelers to know any details about the league's investigation. He touched on this during his Asked and Answered segment on the team's website. I believe if the NFL had decided on a suspension and then a length of a suspension for any player, the league would announce the decision, rather than have it leak out, as it inevitably would. Since there has been no announcement means to me that there has been no decision, and therefore the Steelers couldn't know anything in advance. Labriola makes a good point. With sensitive topics like legal matters concerning players, the league wants to be in full control when it comes to how news about the subject circulates. If a decision was made, it would be announced shortly after the fact. This likely means the Steelers have no clue how long they could be missing Sutton for, which could present an issue. The issue with the organization not knowing how long Sutton could be suspended for is that they have very little experience behind him at the position. Aside from Sutton, the next viable option at slot corner is likely Beanie Bishop, who is an undrafted free agent. Five for Friday, Tomlin shows his value in close games. Winning is the bottom line when it comes to coaching. And winning close games is something that helps separate the good coaches from the great ones. Given the analytics involved, all NFL coaches should have a record right around .500 when it comes to winning one-score games, which is defined by a game decided by eight points or less. There are people who scoff at Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin's run of 17 seasons without a losing record to begin his career. The people who do that don't understand how difficult and rare that truly is. But what's even more impressive is Tomlin's record in one-score games. Since 1970, only four head coaches who have coached at least 100 games have more than Tomlin's 98 wins in one-score games. And those coaches, Bill Belichick, 120 wins, Andy Reid, 110, Don Shula, 106, and Dan Reeves, 105, all have coached far longer than Tomlin. Even more impressive is Tomlin's career-winning percentage in one-score games. Tomlin has compiled a 98-61-2 record in one-score games, a winning percentage of .615 that is the highest in the NFL, tied with Tony Dungy for that honor. Just behind him are Shula, .612, Marty Schottenheimer, .597, and Bud Grant, .596. Tomlin's record in one-score games is even more impressive when things are broken down since the 2007 season. His 98 wins in one-score games in that time are 20 more than Reed, 27 more than John Harbaugh, and 29 more than Belichick. And lest anyone think those other coaches haven't had as many opportunities, that's not the case. For example, since 2007, Belichick is 69-50 to in one-score games, a .580 winning percentage, while Reed is 78-67-1, a winning percentage of .538. Knowing how to win one-score games is an art. The Steelers, for example, went 9-2 in one-score games in 2023. The Ravens, as another example, 
went 4-4 to in one-score games last season. Analytics say that having a 9-2 record in one-score games in one season means that a team will slip back towards the norm the following season. But Tomlin is an outlier when it comes to winning games in that fashion. It's the same reason the Steelers have 15 wins since 2000 in games in which they entered the fourth quarter trailing, five more than the next closest team, the Chiefs. Knowing how to finish and win close games is an art. And Tomlin is a grand master of knowing how to win such games. The start of training camp is still a few weeks away for the Steelers. And it will basically be another week after camp opens on July 24 before players put on the pads and start to ramp up the physicality. But there's a definite buzz starting to be created about the offensive line the Steelers have assembled. As mentioned in this space last week, this is the time of year for lists, as everyone is struggling to come up with interesting content. Latest on LB Blake Cashman's free agency. The Texans' success on defense in 2023 led to a few members of that unit securing lucrative deals on the open market this spring. In the case of linebacker Blake Cashman, several interested parties emerged before he chose his next destination. The 28-year-old inked a three-year, $22.5 million contract with his hometown Vikings in March. Considering Cashman primarily on special teams for three of his five seasons to date, the pact represents a notable windfall. Houston was interested in keeping him in the fold for 2024 and beyond, but the team expected a strong market to exist once Cashman was known to be available. Going further on that note, the former fifth-rounder indicated, via Andrew Kramer of Minneapolis Star Tribune, that the Broncos, Packers, Falcons, and Steelers showed interest in addition to the Texans prior to his Vikings agreement. Cashman is a veteran of 21 starts, 13 of which came last season. During D'Amico Ryan's debut campaign as Houston's head coach, he shattered his career high in tackles, 106, while adding a pair of sacks, one interception and one fumble recovery. That production, along with the terms of his contract, which includes $15 million in total guarantees, will lead to high expectations for Cashman. Minnesota made a notable investment in another ex-Texan, edge rusher Jonathan Greenhead, this offseason, and both players will be counted on to handle a starter's workload on defense. For Cashman, that would have been the case on any new team, considering the contract he landed. Denver lost Josie Jewell in free agency, creating a linebacker vacancy which was filled, at least in part, by the addition of Cody Barton. Green Bay released Devondra Campbell in a cost-shedding move, but no outside move was made to replace him before a Jaron Cooper selection in the second round of the draft. Atlanta was quiet on the linebacker front this offseason, waiting until day three of the draft to make a move, J.D. Bertrand. Pittsburgh made by far the most lucrative LB investment of the group by inking Patrick Queen to a three-year, $41 million deal. The decisions made by the other teams interested in Cashman is a simple what-if matter at this point, of course. Still, it is notable he managed to generate enough of a market to draw interest from several teams after his strong showing in 2023. Repeating that performance moving forward will prove Minnesota's investment in him to be worthwhile. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Blake Cashman's? Leave your opinion in the comments.